Hello, this is Myths and Lore Explored, and today we're looking into Theseus, a powerful demigod and the slayer of the Minotaur. Theseus has similar beginnings to other demigods. He is the son of Poseidon, however he still has two human parents, King Aegeus of Athens and Princess Athera. King Aegeus had sought out the oracle of Delphi for advice on what to do about his lacking of an heir. The oracle gave a very cryptic message to the king. Do not loosen the bulging mouth of the wineskin until you have reached the height of Athens, lest you die of grief. Aegeus sought help from the king of Delphi, who must have been used to her cryptic messages because he knew what it meant. The king of Delphi got Aegeus drunk and arranged for his daughter Athera to provide Aegeus an heir. Following a vision from Athena, Athera got out of Aegeus' bed in the middle of the night and went to the beach and poured a libation to Poseidon. The goddess of the sea then possessed the princess, which allowed for this double paternity. After learning of Athera's pregnancy, Aegeus left to return to Athens, but before leaving, he buried his sandals and sword under a huge rock and instructed Athera that if her son was heroic enough, he would retrieve these heirlooms and claim his royal parentage in Athens. Once he had grown into a courageous young man, Theseus, of course, reclaimed these items from his human father and had to return to Athens to take his place as the king's heir. Theseus had a decision to make when heading out in the world, though, as there were two routes to Athens, a safe route by what is now the Aegean Sea and a notoriously dangerous route by land. Being young and full of ambition, Theseus chose the dangerous path, and along the way proved he was actually the dangerous one killing many bandits and murderers along the way, and particularly slaying an infamous bandit named Periphetes and claiming his staff as his own. Vase paintings of Theseus often show him wielding this weapon. Once in Athens, Theseus went to the king, but did not reveal his identity right away. The king's wife, Medea, caught on to Theseus' identity, though, and was worried Aegeus' stepson would no longer be in line to rule. Theseus must have spent his whole time in Athens less far gloating about being a valiant warrior, too, because Medea asked Theseus to capture the Marathonian bull, a large white bull that is actually the father of the famous Minotaur. Theseus dragged the bull back to Athens and sacrificed it to Athena and Apollo. After Medea's plan to have the young demigod slayed in battle failed, she tried an even more underhanded move by poisoning Theseus's wine. Aegeus was apparently aware of his wife's plan because after seeing it was his own sword on Theseus' hip and sandals on his feet, he realized this was his son and knocked the cup from his hand. Thus, father and son were reunited, and Medea fled Athens immediately, presumably to Asia. Unfortunately for our hero, it was not the end of the family drama that blew up due to his claiming his place at home. The Palantides were a group of 50 men that were sons of Aegeus' brother and were hoping to take power after Aegeus' death due to him not having an heir. So they planned their own assassination attempt on Theseus. The plan was to attack him head-on with one team and lure him to a special location and ambush him with another team. Theseus was informed of this plan ahead of time, though, and ambushed the ambush team, which made the first team disperse. This seemed to stop any waves caused by Theseus' arrival back home. And now, listeners, we're at the story of the Minotaur, a beast born of Poseidon's rage, the great Marathonian bull, and the wife of King Minos. Forced to live in a complex labyrinth, as for it to not lay waste to the land, the Athenians had to send 14 of the most beautiful boys and girls of Athens to King Minos every eight years as tribute for killing Minos' son. These young Athenians were sent into the labyrinth as sacrifices to the Minotaur. On the third occasion of this cycle, Theseus agreed to take the place of one of the youths. The group set sail for Crete bearing a black sail. Theseus promised his father that if he was successful in ending the Minotaur's bloodlust, he would return bearing a white sail. Upon arrival in Crete, the demigod hid his sword under his clothes and the sacrifices were brought before King Minos's court where the king's daughter Ariandi fell in love with Theseus. She was so stricken with him that she sought advice from the creator of the labyrinth holding the Minotaur, Daedalus, who advised her to give him a ball of thread to find his way back and how to get to the Minotaur's den inside the maze. 
Theseus followed these instructions to the Minotaur, where a grand battle between demigod and magical beast endured. Theseus, of course, won this battle by strangling the beast. He then decapitated the beast and used the string to escape with all the Athenian use in Ariandi. The escaping party stopped to rest on the island of Naxos, where the goddess Athena awoke Theseus and instructed him he had to leave Ariandi behind for Dionysus, as Naxos was his island. He did as instructed and was stricken with grief for her as he sailed for Athens. Due to his distress, he forgot to change the sail from black to white. When King Aegeus saw the black sail on the horizon, he assumed his son had failed and was dead. He then threw himself off a cliff in an act of suicide. That body of water is now known as the Aegean Sea. The ship Theseus used on his trip to Crete was revered by the Athenians for centuries. It was kept in a seaworthy state and used in a yearly trip to one of Apollo's most sacred islands. The old rotted wood was cut out and replaced when necessary, leading many to question after a certain point whether or not it could really be considered the same ship. Socrates even brought this up as a philosophical question, but the Greeks revered it anyway. Theseus unfortunately has a tragic death for a hero. He at some point got exiled from Athens. The stories of him say he was a prolific kidnapper of young women which was actually pretty common for the sons of Poseidon and Zeus, as it was also one of their top five hobbies. Theseus fled to the island of Skyros, seeking refuge, but was instead met with hostility as the ruler, Lycomedes, threw the demigod off a cliff. Theseus was given an honorable burial on the island, but was eventually reburied in Athens at a temple in his honor. So, that is the story of the famous Greek hero that has retained his fame for about 1600 years and has been used frequently as protagonist in modern media such as the Wrath of the Titans movies and the Immortals. While this story was surely told around the fires of the Greeks as their form of action movie, it seems it could have also been told as a lesson that just because you are loved one day and hailed a great hero, you are not given a free pass to take advantage of innocent people yourself. So I really hope you enjoy this video. I do plan on doing more covering topics of history through movies, through video games. If you have any ideas on how I could improve this show, please comment below. And if you like, please subscribe.